Hello, welcome everyone to the CK12 Certified Educator Program. We're so excited to have you all here for today's session called Introduction to CK12. We're coming to you live from the CK12 offices in Palo Alto, California in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm Lindsay, a member of the CK12 team. And I'm Katie, also a member of the CK12 team. We're so excited that you're joining us today for our summer programming. As most of you know, this new CK12 Certified Educator Program offers 32 sessions over four weeks. We've designed this program specifically for you, the teachers, administrators, curriculum developers, and others who want to join the open education movement by using CK12's quality content. Katie, before we dive into the details of the program and the rest of today's content, let's make sure that everybody is getting situated with the Zoom webinar platform. When you register for a CK12 webinar, you receive a registration confirmation from Zoom that has a unique link specifically for you. You can join a webinar session with that unique link from a desktop computer, a tablet, and even a mobile device. Now you've all figured that one out as you're here today. Um, if you're missing that registration link, you'll receive it again in an email reminder from us 24 hours ahead of your scheduled webinar, as well as one hour before the webinar begins. So if you're missing that reminder email and you can't find that link, definitely let us know and we'll get you a new registration link from there. When it's about time, click the link and join the session. Once you're a viewer, you should see two different options on your screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. Yeah, your window probably looks a bit like our window. Let's discuss the difference between Q&A and chat. Uh, during today's presentation or any presentation, whenever you have a question for our moderators, instructors, or guests, please post it in the Q&A window. Our presenters will pause for a Q&A session after each major topic to address any questions that have been submitted. The chat window that's quite active at the moment uh, is the place for community conversation. Whenever you join one of our sessions this summer, please feel free to introduce yourselves in this chat window. If you're an educator, it'd be a great place to share where you live or what grade you teach or subject you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending any general posts to all panelists and attendees. If you guys, by default, it says all panelists. So if you do not switch that over, then unfortunately not everybody can see your message. So do make sure it says all panelists and attendees before you submit to the chat window. Also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you are having trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know in Q&A or the chat window, and we'll do our best to help you resolve the issues. So now that you're comfortable with Zoom, let's get started with today's core content. Today's session is really the foundation for the CK12 Certified Educator Program, and our goal today is to get you started. During today's webinar, which is scheduled to last about an hour, we're going to give you all of the details about the CK12 Certified Educator Program, including what you can expect and how to complete certification. We'll then go into a brief overview of CK12, including who we are, where we started, and how we personalize learning. Now, a lot of people know us for our free digital textbooks called Flexbooks, but over the years, we've become so much more than that with our concept-based learning, interactives, and adaptive practice. So we'll go into what concept-based learning means for us. And finally, we'll make sure all of you are signed up and signed in on our site, and we'll give you a quick tutorial to navigate with ease, including an overview of our newest features just launched in the past few months so even veteran CK12 users will see something new. So what are the requirements and what does it actually mean to become a CK12 certified educator? The first basic requirement is that successful completion of the program means registering for and attending a series of seven sessions this summer. Of those seven sessions, two are mandatory. This session, Introduction to CK12, and a culminating session called Maximizing Learning with CK12. To help you structure your sessions in a way that best fits your learning needs, we've established training pathways for you to consider when registering. The first pathway is what we call the content pathway. In this pathway, we cover concept-based modalities and our customizable flexbooks. Whether you're in an adoption cycle and considering going with CK12 resources, or you're already using Flexbooks, but looking to go beyond existing books to customize content, this pathway is for you. We're here to help with editing, from basics to embedding practice and using the math editor, 
and we'll share examples of teaching strategies and how others are using CK-12 in their classes. The second pathway is the intelligent pathway, including sessions on practice, groups, and seeing student progress. The main difference between this pathway and the content pathway is that there is less of a focus on flexbooks and more of a focus on our adaptive practice and intelligence system. This is great for those of you who are already customizing flexbooks and want to better incorporate assignments into your class, either using CK12 groups or integrated learning management systems. The last pathway gives you the option to build your own learning schedule for this summer. This allows you to take multiple 101 classes to get an overview of CK12 resources, or classes like advanced editing and customizing practice to learn more about specific features. Plus, you can take more than the required seven sessions and maybe even join us for all of them. Whether you are on a set pathway or designing your own experience, you will master comprehensive skills for customizing and delivering content. Additionally, you'll receive certification at no cost and on your own schedule. We hope you'll advertise your CK12 certified educator status with your professional networks, on your web pages, and through social media. We'll have a shiny new badge for you to make this statement. Yes, one of the most exciting pieces to come out of this program for us is having a whole group of you that know about CK12 and can continue to share it with others. One of your biggest benefits of participating is joining other educators from around the world. As of this morning, we have over 1,100 participants signed up for the program from over 60 countries, and this number is growing all the time. We're hoping that in addition to learning about CK12, this program will connect you with the greater professional learning community and network of educators in your geographic or subject area. To help foster this growing community, we have several things set up for you. The first is our CK12 Cafe, which is a place for teachers and students to get help and have discussions. I would encourage you all to join the general Jumpstart for Educators Cafe. Here you can reply to our posts and introduce yourself and where you're from, or start a new thread with any questions you have about CK12 or the Certified Educator Program. We also have office hours specifically for these summer sessions. Individuals or groups of teachers can sign up for a 30-minute session with CK12 team members. To do so, go to our ck12.org slash certified 2017 program page, choose a time slot, and sign up. You'll receive a confirmation email and we'll follow up with details for joining us for that window of time. During office hours, you can get specific questions answered about CK12, or we can talk about suggestions and best practices for you. It's very informal. We're here to help. So just to quickly recap, here are the things you need to do to complete this summer certification program. You need to attend seven live sessions, complete the accompanying assignments, each designed to only take about 20 minutes, complete a final feedback form to request your certification, and that's it. At that point, welcome to CK12 Certified Educator Status. For each session you attend, we have created an accompanying assignment, which is required to become CK12 certified. As Lindsay said, they're only about 20 minutes each, and they're designed to complement the webinars with steps to explore CK12, give you a start on customization, and help you think about next steps for working with us. You'll have about a week to complete each of these Google Forms, which we will share in the chat window and each follow-up email. You're also gonna find it on the CK CK12 Certified Educator Program resource page at www.ck12.org slash certified 2017. So now that the program is rolling, this will be your main page with everything you need to know. In addition to the office hours, you'll find resources and help articles for each session, as well as links to all assignments. Each session will be recorded and added to the archived webinar section at the bottom of this page. Don't forget, you can go to ck12.org slash jumpstart to register for any session at any time throughout the program. If any of you out there are joining us today and haven't signed up for the full program with seven sessions, it's not too late to create your own pathway and become CK12 certified. Similarly, if you missed a session for any reason, you can sign up for a future session on that page. Okay, let's go through a few frequently asked questions. 
What happens if I have to miss a live session? You can miss one live session, watch the recording, and turn in an assignment and still meet the requirements of this program. How can I cancel a session? Your reminder emails that you get 24 hours ahead of time or one hour ahead of time contain a link for cancellation. You can always email jumpstart at ck12.org if you need help with cancellation or registration. Can I get professional development credit or CEUs from my district for participating in the program? And the answer is it kind of depends. CK12 will provide a certificate documenting the hours for any live webinar session you attend. It's up to you and your district um, how this gets interpreted or honored for those professional development credit hours. So that was a lot of information. We want to emphasize that it's okay not to get certified too. Our intent is to give you professional development and we don't want the program's requirements to get in the way of your learning. Feel free to register for individual webinars at any time. You can always watch archived webinars on your own schedule. It's your summer and your experience. At this point, I think it's appropriate to ask what you all are thinking about certification. So we're gonna launch a poll. The poll says, um, after learning more about the CK12 Certified Educator Program, which pathway do you intend to complete this summer? So if you guys will all select one, the options are the content pathway, intelligent pathway, custom pathway, or maybe you're just here to attend individual webinars. So I'm watching the results come in. We'll give you a few more seconds to lock, lock in your answer. Okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and end the poll. So showing the results with you guys, uh, looks like the custom pathway is the winner. And I think that makes total sense based on CK12 and how we really like to customize the learning experience for our users, for our teachers, for our students. Um, so that's great. That's great if you've kind of created your own pathway for what you wanna learn this summer. Um, then there's quite a few people who are working probably primarily on Flexbooks and then some other people who are um, checking out the intelligent pathway trying to learn more about adaptive practice. So that might actually be a good place to start. I can see that there's a question in Q&A about these ideas of pathways. Um, Katie, why don't you take that question? Great, thanks, Lindsay. Um, I'm actually gonna share my screen for a second so you can see this registration page because the last three questions that came in all loop together. Um, so if I go to ck12.org slash jumpstart, that will take us to our registration page. Um, so we had questions about switching pathways, recommended pathways, there should be an all pathway. So when you register, really these are just us helping you frame the pathway options. The custom pathway really allows you to do all of them. Um, so you could take any seven sessions from here or you could sign up for all of them within that custom pathway. Um, so that would be your all option. Um, if you've signed up for a particular one and you want to change, you can totally change your pathway. Um, basically, your pathway is just a framework for giving you options when you register. So simply go to the custom pathway and add extra classes or go to your register for individual webinar session here and you can pull up all of those sessions and add any sessions in that you'd like to. Um, so feel free to adjust accordingly. Um, you can cancel your sessions, you can re-register or you can add any new ones if you missed one. So that place will be super, super helpful. Yeah, we, we are offering one certification this summer, and that is that you'll become a CK12 certified educator. So it really doesn't matter to us which pathway you've selected. Um, like Katie said, that's just really for you to help you think about what you want to be learning this summer, because it's just one credential that we're offering at the end that um, is not divided up on your pathway. 
So um, we had a couple of questions that came in regarding which ones you've signed up for or which ones you haven't. You should have received um, an email for anyone that you signed up for. So whatever day you signed in, you would have gotten a string of emails. Um, because these are being hosted through an external platform, right now we don't have a place that shows you what you signed up for. If you're looking for that information, you can email us at Jumpstart and we can pull all of your information for you. Um, so I would say do that and we can get you that piece. Um, but that's something that we will be taking into account next year and hopefully improving this even more at that point in time. Um, and then we had a person here who said they signed up for the Intelligent Pathway, um, but they haven't used a Flexbook before. So what would we recommend? So if I go back into this Custom Pathway, you can see that the first four kind of session options below these are the core pieces of the content pathway, that adopting curriculum and Flexbooks 101. Um, the next four groups in practice through learning management systems are for that intelligent pathway, and Sims and Plix are in both. Um, so if you want the full breadth of options, then I would sign up for as many as you can within that custom pathway. Um, if you're completely new to CK12, this is a place where I might do kind of the groups and practice option and the flexbooks options and get those basic core pieces instead of all the advanced formatting and fun pieces. Um, so I might recommend that piece, um, but it's really what your goal is in your class. If you're going to work and redesign curriculum and use flexbooks and customize them, then you're going to want to take those sessions. If you are just starting by incorporating practice with your students from our site, then you're gonna to wanna to take those sessions. So really based on the goal that you're looking for. Okay, I think um, we're gonna keep going here with some of the, the content. Um, just a few reminders about our, our Q&A and our chat. In the chat window, please do make sure that you're selecting all panelists and attendees. We're getting some information that's coming to just panelists um, that I think is meant to go to all panelists and attendees. Um, and then Q&A, we're gonna answer them throughout today's webinar, so keep those coming in. But right now, I'm gonna take back control of the screen, and we're gonna tell you a little bit more about the CK12 Foundation. Great, so the CK12 Foundation was founded in 2007, and it's a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving student learning by increasing access to educational materials through the Flexbook platform and concept-based modalities. So what does all of that mean? Well, we at CK12 believe every child on this planet should have equal access to great education. All students are unique. Each has a different pace of learning, different interests, and different goals. But with limited time and resources, it's a challenge to treat students as individuals and cater to their varied needs. Our philosophy is that learning is a personal journey. The CK12 Foundation was founded with the mission to enable everyone to learn in his or her own way. We pair high quality content with the latest technologies. We equip students, teachers, and parents with everything they need for free. CK12 is able to offer its resources for free thanks to the generous funding of a private family foundation. Not only are we a nonprofit, but we are a non-revenue nonprofit. You will not be asked your credit card information on our site, you won't hit a paywall, and you won't be bombarded with advertisements. Free means free on CK12. Although it is offered for free, when you use a CK12 resource, you can trust that it's the highest quality. CK12 is used across the world by students, teachers, and districts because it is the best content, not because it is free. We visit schools all the time, including those schools who aren't bound by any budget constraints, and they use CK12 because they know it's what's best for student learning. Our content has been developed by over 100 PhDs, professors, teachers, authors, NASA scientists, and other subject matter and domain experts over the past 10 years. Our content is accessible. We've worked hard to make all of our content available across every platform in both print and digital format. CK12's global impact is incredible with over 15 million active users 
and I'm pretty sure that number just reflects last year's users alone, represented in over 200 countries worldwide. These are just a few of the many, many reasons why educators choose CK-12. As part of our 10th anniversary, we've been traveling around the country and seeing how CK-12 is being used as not only a cost-saving solution, but as the best curriculum for today's students. Let us share some of our conversations with these districts in this two and a half minute video. Back in the summer of 2014, our superintendent challenged us to find a way to save a lot of money with textbooks. And so the way around the traditional adoption purchase of textbooks in our district was to go the CK-12 route. We're such a large district, when we buy textbooks, they're about $85 each, and when you have to buy 18,000 at a time, it comes out to be between 1.5 and $2 million. If you're not spending that money on textbooks, you can spend it on something else, and that's what we decided to do. We needed new materials. We had materials that were quite old and we weren't engaging our kids in science. So we wanted to look for a new way to be able to teach and learn our, uh, with our students. CK-12 was an obvious choice for us for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, we were able to experience some cost savings with it. The content is rich, it's engaging to students, and it's flexible. So it allows us to really tailor the tools to meet the needs of the instruction. We really have come to see this, this product come to life in the classroom. Our, the t our teachers have really taken this um, product and incorporated it into their daily instruction. Their students are even creating their own textbooks. So if we have language learners, if we have special education students, or just an individual who is ready to advance for, for um, pursuing you know, the information that's available, online textbook allows us to customize that and allows students, teachers, parents even to explore that. As we think about customizable content, it's a tool that we use to buy relevance with our kids. In using the CK-12 content, we have the ability to upgrade, update, and customize every math problem, every science experiment with people, places, and things that our students know and understand. We buy relevance that can't be purchased in textbooks. If you can engage student, you're going to increase learning. And I, I believe that with the different modalities that CK-12 provides for our students to learn, a student is going to find a component within CK-12 that brings that learning to life for them. If you want to hear more from our users, you can go to the new CK-12 testimonials page and hear what teachers, administrators, and students are saying about CK-12. We'll be highlighting many of these testimonials throughout our presentations this summer. Like that banner says, CK-12 is trusted worldwide. With users around the world, this map gives you a sense of CK-12's reach, with more users being added each minute. We hope throughout this program you are able to interact with people in your area who are working toward common goals. People often wonder how large the workforce is behind CK-12's learning platform. Well, believe it or not, this website is run by a small team of about 35 people in Palo Alto, with a few colleagues working outside of California and in our India office. And of course, dozens of subject matter experts, educators, and editors help us create the highest quality content. We love what we do and are thrilled to give people all over the world access to free, high quality resources. Our executive director and co-founder, Miru Kosla, is the one who has made all of this possible the past 10 years. I like this quote on how she says that we don't have to tell you what you can do or cannot do. The power of the CK-12 system is that it is usable under any condition. All you have to do is use it. That's our challenge to you. We're going to show you how to use our resources throughout the summer session, but there's no one right way to use our system. You'll find something that will work for you. You just have to get started. With that, let's stop and field any questions you guys might have about the CK-12 Foundation, or it looks like we've got two questions that are both about uh, the program. Great, so we had a 
question about when you might receive your PD certification. Um, so we'll aim to get those within about a week at the end of the program. Um, if you finish in kind of the first half of the program, we'll, we may still be working with logistics for the second half. So um, about a week after the whole program ends, we can get that out. If that is um, something that time-wise you need it sooner, then let us know. Um, but that's our current plan. And then in terms of credit hours, the final form that you'll fill out will ask you to include all of the assignments that you did, all of the um, webinars that you attended live and you know, watch later and all the rest of that. And so that will help us kind of calculate your credit hours as we document that. Um, and then we also, there was a comment that came up in Q&A that I think is really relevant. Um, people were asking how you see your whole schedule. Each of your confirmation emails has an option to add that particular webinar to your Google Calendar or to another calendar that you're working with. Um, so I would definitely check that out and show you, like add that to your calendar and then you can see them in your calendar and go from there. Um, a question about the archived videos. Uh, it takes us about 24 hours to get the videos from each session uploaded to YouTube and then put on that certified 2017 page. But within about 24 hours, you're gonna see it added to the bottom of um, our main resource page. And then we also include the links in outbound um, emails that you will receive the next day, usually after attending a webinar. We have a question about differentiating assignments within a classroom. Um, so our adaptive practice system automatically differentiates within it. So if you're using our adaptive practice system, um, I would definitely recommend it, taking our Groups and Practice 101 webinar or looking that up, and that goes into all of the details about how that adapts to student learning. If you're looking to share different levels of reads, then maybe I would make one major group and then a couple subgroups for set different assignments that could be group A, B, and C, or you know, whatever they look like, and you can assign different pieces. But the adaptive practice component already takes that into account, um, so that should address that issue. I think Maybe piggybacking off of that, there's another question that I think is getting at differentiation. Um, I teach a resource class where students are significantly behind and the rest of the students in the regular classes. I was wondering how the Flexbooks would be used with these students, um, or do you have modified versions of the textbooks you currently have? So we have a couple different levels of textbooks, um, and I'll show that to you in the last part of this demonstration when we go into the site itself. Um, but you can also customize all of our content under our open license option and as long as you're using it for non-commercial use. And so you can differentiate even further for the resources that your students need. Okay, let me answer some of these program questions real quick. Starting at the top, how soon are we notified um, of an assignment grade? And your assignments aren't necessarily being graded by us. Um, they're built so that after each session, you have a chance to digest what we covered in that session and really apply it to your individual situation. So they are submitted. And then as Katie said, on your last session, the assignment's gonna include a place for you to put um, you know, links to all of your assignments and the hours that you attended in the program. So unless there is a specific element of the assignment that you need um, us to comment on, you probably aren't gonna receive any traditional grading feedback from us. Um, a question about you attended a Flexbook session this morning and haven't received an email yet. Like I said, um, emails will always go out the next day. That's just how our system works. So if you were not able to get the tiny URL link that we posted um, during that session, you can go to ck12.org slash certified 2017. And underneath that Flexbook 101 session, you'll see the link to the assignment on that page. And then tomorrow when you do receive the email, the assignment will be linked there as well. We had a question about credits for certification. Um, as we said, we will document your hours. Um, if you are looking to have them count towards a particular certification, you would need to take them to your district or state level. Um, and then they would determine whether or not that would count towards professional development. Um, and then we have a couple of general questions, but I think at this point in time, we're going to continue to answer these questions, but we're going to move forward with our presentation. And we always stay on at the end, so if we haven't gotten to your question yet, we will come back to it, I promise you, and we will make sure they get answered before we leave today. Yes, please do keep the questions coming. Um, 
But we want to tell you a little bit more about CK12. We talked about our team and our users and our mission. Um, and I guess we want to show you that all of this didn't happen overnight. Uh, like we said, CK12 was founded in 2007. So we're celebrating 10 years this year. And that's, that's an amazing thing for any company, I think particularly in ed tech. We're really proud to be celebrating 10 years. In 2008, Flexbooks launched with fully customizable math and science textbooks free for the world to download or view online. In 2010, CK12 added teacher editions that offered extensions like workbooks and quizzes and tests with corresponding answer keys. In 2011, our concept collections were introduced. Unlike our original Flexbooks that offer full lesson plans and follow the structure of what you'd find in a more traditional textbook, these concept collections deconstruct the books into bite-sized chunks of information similar to how teachers want to teach and how students want to learn. In 2012, we continued to break our content down into these individual concepts and present them in multiple modalities to fit different learning styles, allowing all students to learn their way and on any device, because that was the year when CK12 was available on desktops, tablets, and mobile phones. To encourage discussion and collaboration, classes and study groups were created in 2013. This allows students to share CK12 resources and for teachers to create class assignments. The latest greatest initiatives from CK12 continue to develop personalized learning experiences through our simulations and Plix interactives, as well as our intelligent adaptive practice system that offers over 150,000 math, science, and spelling practice questions. So we just told you that we took our flex books and broke them down into bite-sized concepts. And circular motion is an example of one of these concepts. Like when a student might go to Google and search for circular motion, they can do the same thing on CK12 and arrive at one of our concept pages with content that has been curated and vetted by us. This is where students can really learn their way through these different modalities, such as simulations, study guides. Unlike when students are learning through a printed text where all they can do is read, CK12 concepts come alive with interactive content. These days, students don't wanna look through a table of contents, they're, they're not looking in an index, they wanna use a search bar, and they, have a ch they wanna have a choice. Um, and how to learn any concept. Also, what a great tool for students who want to get ahead or for those who need different information or options to learn a concept. This page truly differentiates learning. As you saw, there are a number of different ways to learn any concept on CK12. We enrich every concept with modalities to help meet students' needs in the best way possible. Our core modalities include text, which we call reads, our simulations, our interactive clicks, videos, practice, and even real-world applications. You're going to learn more about these different types of modalities throughout all of our summer sessions. But at this time, let's see what you guys are currently using in your class. So please take a few seconds to answer this poll. Which of the modalities are you using? As we just went through them, reads, simulations, clicks, videos, assessments, real-world applications, or none of the above, meaning that you're not using any of these in your class at this time. So you can choose more than one answer, so go ahead and click and check off any that you are using, and we'll give you a few, little bit of time to kind of work your way through that particular poll. Okay, I'm watching the results come in. We're waiting for a few more of you to submit your answers. I know there are a lot of options there. Again, choose all that apply, any that you've used before. And just a few more seconds. And we're gonna go ahead and end the poll and we'll show you the results. Um, Reads, that's, that's not surprising at all. Um, again, we've got awesome content that students can come to for more of a, a lesson on an individual concept. Um, also videos, we have curated and vetted our videos, so we are a great spot to, um, to find some videos related to concepts. Uh, that's awesome that so many of you have tried our assessments. 
Um, and then simulations and clicks and real world applications. We're gonna talk more about those as we go through our summer program. And then those of you who said none of the above, uh, welcome to CK12. We're gonna get you confident in using all the different modalities. So we're gonna go ahead and let's stop sharing that poll. And I wanna show you how you can connect these concepts. Um, this is one of our newer features called the concept map. And our platform allows teachers and students to choose their own pathways of teaching and learning. But we provide tools like this concept map to help show how the concepts relate to one another, even across disciplines. So as you encounter links for the concept map on our site, you might want to take a few minutes to explore this rich tool. So I think with that, we're going to stop and answer some more questions as we go through. Um, we have a couple of different questions in here. One asks about integration with Google Classroom. And yes, we are integrated with Google Classroom. Um, currently, you can share resources to Google Classroom. But for this fall, we'll be actually hopefully finishing up our integration with them for grade passback as well. So you can assign work within Google Classroom. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we had a question about funding. We are funded by a family foundation. Um, if you're looking for particular details on that, then you're more than welcome to kind of email CK12 and we can get back to you with any specific details. Um, but we're really going to focus on what our platform offers and how that works today. Um, we have a couple questions about ordering in terms of what um, the pathway options. So I'm going to go over for one more second and share my screen again. Um, and if you look here, these for first and last session, the Intro to CK12 and Maximizing Learning, we recommend that you take them as bookends. So today you're taking Intro to CK12. Some of you probably took one of our sessions already, um, and some of you may have to take Maximizing Learning before the end of it. Um, but we really, the goal of those is to frame the program and help you to kind of put it all together at the end of it. Um, so we encourage you to take those kind of as much as possible as the bookends to your program. If you're looking down at the actual program, like sessions, the core sessions within there, um, something like Flexbooks 101, I would recommend taking before advanced Flexbook editing, and the same for groups in practice before customizing practice, so that you know the basics and understanding before we launch into more of those higher level, nitty gritty, um, advanced editing options. Um, so those are kind of the pieces that I would say in terms of order of the program that might be beneficial. Katie, while you've got your screen shared, we've got a couple questions that relate to LMSs and Google Classroom. Do you want to show them the, the way to, in our footer, maybe how to find the information they want on previewing LMS information? Sure. Down here at the bottom where it says Buy CK12, if you click on this Tools and Apps option, um, this is our three apps that CK12 offers. Let me actually make it a little easier to see that part. Um, so we have our Flexbook app, our Physics and Sims app, um, and our Practice app. So some of these allow offline access. The Practice app allows students to use a phone or tablet. And then below that, it gives information on our integration with Google Classroom, Edmodo, Schoology, Canvas, et cetera. So you can always go to this page and see, you know, these links allow you to sign up to get the keys that you need to make that work in that integration, um, and lots of options as you go through there. Okay, we have a question um, about, you know, somebody who maybe isn't a certified educator right now, but working in education, um, signing up for the adaptive practice pathway. Do you think a program like this will be beneficial for somebody with my background? And I just want to encourage if, if, if you've arrived at CK12 and you're here in this webinar and you have anything to do with education, of course, like this is, this is great training on just how to use our site and our resources. We have people from all different backgrounds from, you know, like we said, around the world, but we get um, homeschooling educators who are working with, with, with their own kids, with students in, in their area. We get upper level, lower level, um, people who are, are mentoring or tutoring and aren't really in a classroom situation. So we hope that uh, you can attend several webinars or go ahead and get the certification and really feel like you have resources to use in any context that you may be working in. 
Um, so we had a question about providing specific examples. The next part of this demo will go into our site. So we're just going to hold off on that one for a minute. Um, but we are going to go in there. And then we had a question um, that I'm not sure about for the pool. So just if you can clarify your questions, we'll type something in there and you can kind of respond with more clarification. That would be fantastic. And we'll continue to answer as we go. Okay, so to set you all up for success for the summer program, and since we know you're going to be excitedly exploring CK12 as soon as you get off this webinar, we want you all to take a quick tour of how to sign in, navigate, and explore all CK12 has to offer. Um, we're also going to highlight many of the new features that just launched in the past few months. So I think Katie is going to stay on live here and show you how to uh, get signed in. Great, thanks, Lindsay. So I'm going to use this little CK12 logo at the beginning. Normally I would start this not logged in or all the rest. So let me sign out so you can see the whole process from the beginning. So here I arrive at the home page. I'm on the teacher version of the home page. Um, and I have some options to go through. I could start browsing, but so that I don't hit any roadblocks, um, you can join simply right here. Google, Facebook, show more, sign up with your email. Um, and once you have an account, you can do the same thing. You can sign in using those same options. Um, and we recommend that you always sign in the same way because your email address is what is the unique identifier for your account. So as long as you continue to sign in the same way, all of your resources will be in that account and you won't have to be worried that they're in a different account. So I have a Google email address. So I'm gonna use sign in with Google and it's gonna bump me right into the system. And if I already have an account going, it'll take me to my dashboard. And from here, I can see content. I can see groups that I'm hosting or that I have members in. Um, and that's this dashboard right here, kind of this content. I can navigate directly to the groups as well. Your library up here is where all of your resources are stored that you have customized or any resources that you've added to your library to be able to access them cleanly from there. Our cafe is a forum discussion group, um, so there's plenty of options for that. We'll talk about the educator one um, at the end of this webinar. And I can browse content through this browse option or through the search bar at the top. And my CK12 logo will always take me back to that homepage. So when I go back here, as a teacher, there's a couple extra resources specific to teachers on their version of the homepage. One is our standards browser. So if we look here, you can search Common Core Standards or Next Generation Science Standards. Um, another option is to find textbooks based on either a state or a particular standard option. So you could explore that resource and see what comes up from there. You could browse a number of different places. So your physics and chem options, these are our simulations, our Plix Interactives, our Adaptive Practice, and our Schools page. Um, and um, let me click on this one right now just because it's going to become super important when we're talking about user created content. So schools that have customized our content on CK12 can find can republish their content under their schools page. So we can create a schools page with you. Um, you can claim your schools page and manage it. And let's say we had the other day someone from Texas talking to us. So if I was in Texas, I could go there. I could scroll down. I could say Oh look, El Paso has a number of books that they've customized from CK12. And in addition, they've also created some English content and some history and government content. And so as a non-STEM teacher, those might be some great resources on where to find pieces as you're working your way through. So you can navigate your way either via those browse options, the navigation at the top, or down at the bottom through subjects. Or, as we said, you can always go by searching something. So Lindsay brought up the idea of circular motion earlier today. So let's go search circular motion and see what shows up. So we have a couple of options. One, I can go straight to a concept on circular motion, which would be the page that Lindsay was talking about. So here, you'll see all of these different resources, interactives, videos, reads, um, even kind of assessment and a real world application. I can filter. Um, it looks like there's some basic resources as well. So if a student is struggling, here's some videos that might help them with this concept. 
So that might be useful. Or you could just go to all levels and then look at the particular um, kind of tagging on any one resource to see what it looks like. So that's an option for accessing a concept page. If we go back to the search, let's talk about options. You can filter your search based on the type of resource that you want, one of those different modalities, or by grade levels, or you could find community contributed content here as well. So if I went over here, you'd see reads that different users have customized based on the same topic. Now, CK12 curates and creates content that we put in our CK12 content tab within that search. Your library has your content. Um, and then the community contributed content is any content that other users have recreated or customized and republished to our site. And in there, you'll find a number of different resources at varying levels of quality. So you might see something that a person has just barely started to customize and there's not a lot in there for you to use yet, and other ones that are fully customized or fully created books that might be fantastic resources. Um, given that there are about 150,000 variations of books on our site that different users are working with, we curate and maintain the quality of the CK12 content and then you are welcome to use any content outside of that as well. So that would be a search option. Let's go into the browse option as well. So if I went back here, or if I use the little browse icon there, I could go down and I could see multiple subject areas. So we just talked about circular motion and science. So let's say I picked a topic in algebra. Here you'll see all of our concept pages, and each one of these links would take you to that concept page. So definition of a variable would bring me to all of the resources for that particular concept. If I went back to the main page for algebra, I could also click on the Flexbooks available. And here, if the um, topic spans middle school and high school, you'll see books for both. I can switch to high school if I want. You could scroll down and see any available Spanish translations of our books or filter based on that. And then you can filter on levels. So sometimes for some of our core content, you'll see an honors or basic version. And that might be helpful if you needed to pull resources for different students for any particular topic. Now, if I go into here, let's talk about this Algebra 1 concepts. The very first section in here is that definition of a variable section. And this is what it actually looks like for a user. So in this regard, I have my text. I have a link to preview practice because I'm a teacher. I can scroll down here and see some videos. I can kind of see vocabulary and even other resources. And any of these modalities would jump me to that concept page. Now, if I pulled this same one up as a student, so let me just switch over to a student page. I want to point out two differences between teachers and students. One is that their home page includes study guides here instead of the schools piece although they can still access schools up at the top here. We removed the standards because the standards basically, teachers find super valuable, but students don't have as much need for as they're working their way through. And then if I went into that same book that I was just looking at, and they were looking at the concepts version. So our original Flexbooks, let's say our Algebra 1 second edition book has longer lessons, so less lessons, but they're longer, they include multiple skills. And we took those and we broke them down into concepts and then supplemented those concepts and enhanced those concepts with all of the other modalities for that concept. So this particular chapter has even more sections in it because it's going down into breaking these concepts into smaller chunks. But this first one here has one of our new amazing features for students, which is that we're actually showing practice to them right as they are reading this content. Um, so if you assign this practice, a student can do it right while they're reading, and then you'll be able to see the reports in your reports feature. So that's definitely an option as you work your way through and something that's kind of a cool piece. The other really cool new feature that just came out that I want to show you guys that you might not have seen is that if I go back up here, I can always use this navigation at the top to go backwards. Um, and this offline reader allows me to access um, either a book or chapters within a book in an offline mode. So we have the Flexbook app to access 
offline via a tablet or a phone, um, but you can also actually download it and access it offline for a computer. So I think with that, we, the last thing we were gonna talk about was kind of that tools and apps part, but we already showed you where that is. So down at the bottom, you can definitely check that out. Um, but maybe we'll stop here for Q&A. Okay, so while you're kind of showing them where to navigate and find our content, um, a question is about any material for kindergarten. Um, and then another question related to, to content while we're talking about what we offer. Um, are science books done like algebra with a content version? Are they all inclusive? Um, so maybe just again show them what we've got here. Um, so if we go back to that homepage here and we look at our, I'm going to pull up all subjects so you can see some stuff. We have um, a kindergarten based science book. So that would be one resource that you might have there. Beyond that, um, really our, there's a pre-K, if I go to algebra for a second, um, like pre-K through seventh grade algebra explorations book. Um, so that might have a little bit of resources for that grade level, and then it kind of goes one through five with the math resources um, for these are videos and practice. There's not text in them at this point in time. So that's what um, CK12 offers. We started with middle school and high school content, but then I would recommend kind of browsing and searching schools and seeing what other resources other users have put on our site. Um, the second piece of that, the second question that Lindsay asked was about science content and was it similar? So if we looked at our science content, let's pull up biology for as an example. You'll see here our biology book and then our matching biology concepts book. Um, and so if I open this book up, you'll see here there are, looks like 24 different chapters, 25 different chapters. Let's just look at kind of one or two of the beginning ones. So we have what is biology and the chemistry of life, and then a couple different chapters on cells. And if I open cellular structure and function, my original book had three different sections. And each of those have the same, you know, if there's associated practice, they can use that piece. But this is my original book. If I go back and I look at the other book, that biology concepts book, You'll see that because we broke it up into concepts, they kind of reorganized this book in a different way. And that cell biology includes not only the first three parts that had to do with basics of cells, but they actually pulled all of the concepts of cells into here. And each one of these is then supported with the same read as a, oh, I'm good, I'm still in the student account. So you can see the practice widget for a student or you would see that orange preview for a teacher. And then you'd go down and you'd see another resource that might get you to that concept page. Um, so similarly, there's kind of two different types of books, our original books that have each lesson is longer and includes multiple concepts, and our concepts books that take those larger lessons and break them down into bite-sized chunks and support them at that level with our other resources. All right, let me tackle a few program-based questions again. Um, several questions still around this idea of pathways. I just wanted to say again that the way we broke down pathways was really for you when you were registering for the summer program. Our website does not really break things down in that way of content and intelligent. We offer resources that span all of those different categories. So if you are tutoring was one question, which program is best? All of them. It depends if you're working on a flex book that you wanted to create for a student to go through while they're um, working on a certain subject, or maybe particularly our adaptive practice system would be great for um, a tutoring situation so that students can see, you know, how they're doing and progress and have the system fill in gaps for them. Um, we had several questions about when we get certified, are we going to get some CK12 gear? Are we going to get, you know, I imagine you're talking about t-shirts and pens and exciting things like that. Um, I do have to remind you that we are a non-revenue non-profit. So um, I've been working here for years and I have one t-shirt that says CK12 on it. So I love the idea and um, I'm, I would love to pitch it to our founder. Um, 
we are promising your digital badge and that's it at the moment. Uh, we'll see if we can negotiate anything more exciting than that. Um, we do have more questions in our Q&A, but to be conscious of time, um, you know, when we start approaching the hour mark, that's when I always kick over. So I'm going to steal back the screen. And I want to make sure that we discuss um, the assignments and a few other wrap-up information. But please keep your questions coming. Um, because after we officially wrap at the hour mark, we will always stay on and answer any additional questions you guys have. So um, what you guys are looking at right now is what you're going to see on your assignment that relates to this session. So for all of you who are working on a pathway to earn your certification, you will need to complete the accompanying assignment. You're going to find it at this link, which is www tinyurl.com slash CEP 17 intro. So this, this Google form is actually a really long link. So we shorten it down with a tiny URL and then CEP stands for Certified Educator Program 17 and then intro. So we put it in the chat window and it's going to be in your follow-up email tomorrow. You're welcome to write it down right now or on our certified 2017 page, you will find this link underneath the introduction to CK12 session information. So for this assignment, um, we're asking you to complete work in three sections. The first section is gonna ask you about your learning goals for the summer and what skills you were hoping to develop or what resources you were hoping to create on CK12. The second helps you explore CK12's concepts and get a better idea of what resources best meet your needs. And the third section asks you to join the CK12 Jumpstart for Educator Cafe and begin interacting with hundreds of program participants. So um, please complete the assignment within about a week. Um, that's just to keep it fresh and relevant. We keep records on our end of the completion as you work toward your CK12 certified status. Also before we end this webinar, we encourage you to answer a short survey to give us feedback on the content and presentation of today's webinar, as we're always looking to improve your experience and we wanna make sure to cover topics you're interested in this summer. So the link to the Google form is listed on the screen. This is another tiny URL. It is CEP 2017 feedback. This feedback is not required. This is not an assignment. And this will be the same link that you'll see at the end of every webinar we do all summer long. Anytime you guys leave a webinar and you have something you wanna tell us, if you have positive feedback or if you have suggestions for how we can improve, go to this link and type in your feedback. We review it every day and we continue to make modifications to our program based on people's suggestions. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. I wanna to ensure you that you will be supported by our team at CK12. We are happy to help you in any way. You can send us an email at any time to support at ck12.org. Also, don't forget to let your socials know about CK12 and your participation in our webinars. We're on all the socials as CK12 Foundation, or you can always hashtag CK12 Foundation as well. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's programming. For those of you who need to make your exit, you are welcome to do so, but we're gonna stay on and we're gonna to continue to work on that Q&A window and all the questions you guys have for us. So let me turn it back over to Katie, who's gonna take some questions. So we had actually an observation from a user that I wanted to point out. Um, she said most of the other sessions, assignments took her maybe that 20, 20, 30 minutes that she um, that we're kind of pitching. This first one took a little longer. Um, as a brand new user to CK12, there will be a learning curve in terms of finding content. Um, so this one, yeah, that, that's probably accurate. It may take a little longer to find the different resources available, um, but hopefully that time put in now will help make the other ones kind of speed up and they'll all average out to about that amount. Um, so we had a question here about the difference between CK12 and Khan Academy. Um, so CK12 offers a lot of different resources. I know Khan Academy offers some as well. They started with videos and are expanding out. We started with full curriculum that, and then included in our concepts that adaptive practice, um, our interactive simulations and flicks, and some other pieces all under that open license and the platform that allows you to customize. 
Um, so you may find resources in both places that are useful. We kind of have a similar mission in providing content to help students learn. Katie, maybe you want to take back over the screen here. Um, we had a question about uh, at level. I know that this is an interesting one for new users. What we mean by at level, um, basic, advanced. So could you show those different filtering options? Sure. Um, so let's look kind of in a particular resource. I know I tend to be math heavy because I taught math. So let's go back to our homepage and look at some science options. Um, so if we looked at physics and we picked a topic, let's say um, average velocity. And here you'll see accurate and some basic options. Um, so the all levels option means that it would, it would show you resources that were tagged as being basic, accurate, or advanced. Um, and really the goal is to allow for some differentiation within any particular topic. Um, so some topics span sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, um, especially in some of the middle school sciences and the math content there, depending on when you would look at it. And so for any book, if that topic is appropriate, then that would be tagged as accurate read um, if it's within that book. Anything that's a basic book or an advanced book um, or content that we think is really more supplemental or more challenging than what we would say would be the standard for that particular concept, um, that would really allow us to tag it that way and help you kind of say, okay, this kid's doing really well and needs some extra pieces. Um, and so we're going to give him those options or I'm going to pull from those basic resources and help maybe all of my students or students in particular. Um, and that continued with is the vocab for freshman, sophomore, or junior, or for students who understand basic concepts, those who understand more. I'm just thinking that you're asking about the vocabulary that was at the bottom of some of those reads. Um, that's just general vocab that's related to that topic. So it's, that's not necessarily grade specific. Um, some students at different levels based on their background in math and science might um, already understand some of that vocabulary, but it's, it's relevant for that particular read. We have a question about the different options for Flexbooks, of uh, the regular or the concept um, collection, and specifically about learning new material. Maybe just review again the difference between those two different offerings. Sure, so I, let's see, I just used a science example, so let's flip back to a math example. Um, maybe look at some geometry options. So if I look at one of these geometry books, for middle school, you'll see kind of our basic geometry and then some of our middle school options. And then if I went to high school, I would see my basic geometry concepts and my basic geometry original book, concepts in my original book, and then kind of an honors concept version that we developed after we switched over to concepts. Um, let's look at the geometry concepts books for a second. And Really, you can use either one that you want to use. Um, so in here, you'll see that there are 12 sections in my geometry book. Um, this is the concepts book. So the advantage to using a concepts book for, let's say, congruent angles and angle bisectors is it's tagged to our practice. It's tagged to other resources. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, oh, let's go back up a little, a video, an interactive. So we're correlated one-to-one -one in those concepts books. So I go back up and back a page to the chapter level. Once again, we had, let's say, 12 sections in this particular chapter for geometry. And if I went back to my geometry book and looked at the original book for the geometry, our second edition of our original book, and the same chapter, we have seven sections, including a chapter review. So we really took these sections and broke them down into those smaller concepts. These ones, if I pull up angles and measurement, for example, I have a couple of different pieces. Two rays is an angle, protractor postulate, classifying angles, so kind of the definition, and then classifying and drawing an angle. Um, and then making angles and segments in a diagram. So all of those are kind of different skills with different practice and different pieces. So this is a totally fine book to work with 
just know that if you're looking to supplement it kind of at that lower bite-sized chunk level, then you might want to start with the concepts piece. Um, we had one question at this point in time that I think I'm going to answer as well while I, you're all looking at my screen, and that is if I need to change my email account. So if you change your schools and you get a new email, before you create a new account, this is the kicker. So I go into here, go into my settings, and then I want to update my information. So it says I'm signing in with this Jumpstart account. I can change my profile, my email, notifications, and all the rest of it. In here, I actually need to change my email within the settings of my account before I create a separate account with that new email. Because once that separate account is created, then we don't have the ability to merge them because that's the unique identifier. So before you add a new account with that new email address, just go into your profiles and update your settings for that particular piece. We had a question that said correlated one-to-one. -one. Um, so let me go back to that page. When we were looking at geometry, so we were talking about angles in there. So angle classification, congruent angles and bisectors. This here is tagged cleanly so that this read within that concept book matches the read within this page and all of the resources are tagged to that same page. Within that original book that doesn't have the word concepts in it, there's multiple reads like this or multiple topics that cover multiple concepts. So you might need to, if we go back here for a second, you might need to say, okay, well, angles, angle classification, um, bisectors of angles, all of these might all be covered in one lesson within that topic, but then I would have to assign all of those different pieces to get kind of the full breadth of resources that go with that particular topic. And we said, does the concept book contain all of the books in the original book, but in smaller chunks? I'm assuming you're talking about all the lessons. Um, that's the basics. There's, there's a, every now and then we tweak something because we wanted to update the book, you know, kind of, we would have made another edition of the original book and changed something in there and she made that change in the concepts. But for the most part, the lessons within the original book got broken down and sometimes kind of put in different chapter breaks, but still like the core content is basically covered in your concepts book as well. Um, so definitely just kind of, if you're, if you're comparing any two, you should be seeing similar concepts, just the kind of one lesson splits into multiple concepts in the concept book. So there's a question about, can you show us one more time how to get to the modalities page? So I'm not sure, maybe they're asking about um, the modalities that are on a concept page or maybe even from the home page, those different circle icons of how to get to those modalities. If I'm in a branch already, these are your modality pages. So I can click on here. Um, let's say distance between two points, and it will take me to that modality page with all of those modalities. Um, so to get there, I could have gotten there from browse, where I have my subject options or all options if I click on show all, or from the home page, if I scroll down, I can get to these same subjects and go from there. Or I could have searched like we did before. So let's say I'm gonna search um, projectile motion. And here, you'll see general information about that, but then these are all concepts, one in physics and one in physical science that have to do with projectile motion. So that would take me to that concept page and all of the resources available there. So projectile motion is covered a little in physical science. And then if we went back, we could cover the one in physics that has a number of other resources that might be useful as well. Um, so you could do that piece. If you're looking for specifics, such as simulations or clicks or adaptive practice modalities, you can click on any one of these and it will take you to the browse pages for those options. So here's browse for simulations, for physics. I can click over to chemistry. 
and see our beta ones for chemistry. I can go back and I can do the same thing for PLICS. And so those are ways to kind of get to those modalities as well. We had a question that, you know, do you have to stay on for this extended Q&A in order to receive credit for your session? And no, again, we will always wrap at an hour. Once we describe your assignment and kind of do our sign off, if you need to head out, you're welcome to. Um, and then, you know, for those of you who want to stay on and hear the additional Q&A, um, stay on as long as you like. Right now, our um, Q&A is empty. So as we're doing a last call for any questions, why don't we show you the ck12.org slash certified 2017 page just one more time here to show you that this is where you can sign up for office hours if you need individual um, help. Um, this is also the place where underneath all of the session descriptions, you will see information about that session, the times offered, some help resources, and then the assignment for that session. So if you're ever, you know, needing to find that assignment link again, the certified 2017 page is your page. Um, question just came in about if we do stay on for Q&A, will you recognize and acknowledge it toward our CEU hours? I see what you educators are doing here, you know, <laughs> trying to rack up the hours. Um, Again, we're going to rely on you at the end of this program to report the hours that you spent. You're going to tell us. You're going to tell us what sessions did you attend, how much time did you spend on them, um, your assignments, how much time you spent on the assignments. And based on that, we can cross-check our system. We do have attendance records that say how long you were on our webinars. Um, we have record of your assignments you've submitted. So we basically verify, um, based on our records, what you guys say you accomplished. You'll get it in a certificate, and then you can take that to your district and see how they choose to honor that um, at your district level. So we hope that you guys are going to get lots of credit for your time here. It's awesome that you're, you're spending so much time. And I know there's no, just want to get credit for the training. It's relevant to professional growth. Absolutely. I hear you. I hear you. Um, with that, I think we're going to go, oh, no. Squeezing a question in. If I wanted to get the students to sign up themselves, could they use their Google accounts or is there a place that provides the step-by-step -step instruction for them? So if you're trying to sign up students, um, you can do that within yourself, actually. Um, so I could set up a demo from here. Um, I'm not sure why it's claiming I have no groups, because clearly I have 11. So there we go. Um, must did something that triggered that. I can set that up and in any particular class, I can go to the settings option and I can add members to here. So if I wanted to add students, I could add students by inviting them via email, creating an account, especially for students that are elementary that don't have an email address associated, or I can add students that already have accounts. Um, so as a teacher, you can invite them to your group in a couple different ways. Um, if you're trying to upload an entire class or school, you're welcome to send us a file and we can kind of do that on our end. Um, that way you're not doing that individually, but you're definitely welcome to do that. If they have Google accounts and that's what they're planning on using, um, then by all means, they can just simply click on here. If I sign out again, just click join. And if they're logged into their Google account, they can sign up with Google. And that's probably the easiest way for them to never have to remember another password or go from there. Okay, I think with that, we are going to sign off from today's webinar, and we look forward to seeing you guys on future webinars. So let us know if you have any um, problems via email, and uh, we'll see you soon.